All right, moving on, topic 4.1, video two. Moving on to divergent boundaries. These are those boundaries where the plates move away from each other. So we can see um, the middle part of these divergent boundaries is called a rift zone. And uh, what that does, it creates, when it happens in the ocean, it creates a mid-ocean ridge. That's what you have going down the Atlantic all the way. It's kind of interesting. It was discovered, I, I believe, um, it was thought something strange was going on down there when they started laying cables you know, across the Atlantic for telegraphs, like in the early 1800s, I think. And they move around a lot and people are like why is it moving so later on of course they discovered that there's a huge ridge in a mountain zone uh, straight down the middle of the Atlantic pretty much uh, but what that does is it creates new crust all along that rift zone moving out so that's new oceanic crust forming so if you want to find the youngest rock in the world you would go to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge along each side of uh, the rift zone. Anywhere where there's magma cooling, that's gonna be uh, new rock. Um, the oldest rock on Earth is actually found in Australia, I believe. Um, the rock is floating basically on top of the, uh, uh, um, you know, in the lithosphere as crust, that tends to be the oldest, um, um, the oldest rock. Uh, so again, um, this top layer is called the lithosphere. And that's the crust. Um, and then right underneath it, underneath it is the asthenosphere. Where you have that magma and that when it starts to get hot and that heat. Journey to the center of the earth, maybe you've seen, maybe you've seen that movie. There we go. Um, yeah, that has the rock in it. Definitely awesome. I talk about rock movies during. <laughs> San Andreas is one I get to talk about for the uh, for this earth science stuff. Uh, so here's another you know diagram showing a divergent plate um, model. Always good to get lots of different models. Um, so this is Earth's crust, crust. Again, oceanic, meaning that's newer, like the newest um, crust there is. Um, underneath it, here's the mantle, and kind of that transit transition zone. You know, that's the asthenosphere. And what happens is you have the uh, when the rock heats up, it flows up and then cools down, it descends again. Those are called convection currents. Same thing happens in the oceans and in um, the atmosphere. You have hot air rising and then it cools and then it comes down. So convection currents. You may have heard convection ovens. They basically use that similar technique. Basically they're just using a fan to move the heat around. Um, an air fryer works a lot like a convection oven or is a convection oven. Uh, but yeah, convection. Um, not just in the crust, in our atmosphere and in the ocean. Convection currents are huge. Um, so that a North American plate, you know, moving to the west, Eurasian plate moving east. About one centimeter a year. I'm gonna write down. I mentioned that one centimeter per year. Uh, two examples. Um, the, this is a continental rift. So far, I've just been talking about that mid-Atlantic Ocean, um, mid-ocean ridge. But you want also that does occur on land, and the biggest example, really, uh, is the African Rift Valley going through East Africa. 
the cradle of humanity where all um, homo sapiens um, developed into our species around 200,000 years ago take or give or take 10 20,000 years uh, and then slowly spread out of Africa in the Middle East Asia then into Europe or actually maybe humans may have been going into um, uh, maybe not Australia and everything because Europe was pretty cold for a long time so humans Humans, early humans did not want to mess with that, all that ice. So what I want you to do right now, <clears throat> use one of the examples before. I would use either this one or this one as an example um, to draw and label your own divergent boundary. So go ahead and pause and draw your divergent boundary and make sure to label. It's got to be labeled. Draw, label your own. Get it into your head. This next picture is showing, this is the Northern Lights. You maybe heard of the Northern Lights. It's just beautiful. I really, that's one of the things I kind of want to see in person, the Northern Lights. Because I love sunsets and sunrises. I just, there's something about that. Those colors in the sky, I'm getting teary, I think about it. So beautiful. Um, I know that if I saw something like that, streaks of beautiful color going through the sky, I would really, that would have a big impact on me. But I'm showing you this, this picture in particular, uh, this is Iceland. And uh, you can see there's a lot of um, geothermal activity um, happening in Iceland because it's on that mid-ocean ridge where magma is coming up through the crack in the basically a crack in the earth um, and this funky little island um, developed because of that um, Iceland but it's weird it's really cold but they have all these um, really hot like geysers and um, hot water right beneath the surface and uh, this is an example of a geothermal power plant. Basically, they're taking energy, heat energy from the Earth's surface, from the Earth, from down below the Earth's surface, using that to generate steam, then to turn the turbines. So basically, heat used to make steam. And what that does, it turns a turbine, and that turbine is attached to a generator. And guess what that generator makes? Electricity. So hopefully you can see that. The contrast isn't so good on that, unfortunately. Oh, the power lines, you can barely see the power lines. See these, power, these towers from the power lines? Oh, you can see them right there. Um, we do this is how we get our power right now most of it we burn natural gas so instead of just natural heat coming from the earth we burn natural gas that's another way to get the heat and that's called methane most of the United States we burn methane now to generate that heat to make the steam to turn the turbine to turn the generator to make electricity um, same thing, coal, nuclear energy works the same way. You use a fission reaction to make that. You got to make heat um, to generate electricity in the traditional sense using a turbine. Um, now, wind power, you've heard of wind power. Uh, they, that's actually a form of solar energy because the wind comes from the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. So, uh, in effect, you're so a wind turbine is using solar energy um, but you're more, mostly familiar like we keep seeing on the videos that the solar ads you California do not pay for your solar you can get it for free those solar panels you see um, right outside our window in the classroom for summer school we can see some houses with solar panels um, they use a special chemical or a, a material the photons generate a small electric current and that gets compounded and that ends up generating electricity. Um, 
but and then in the desert if you drive to Vegas you can see yeah it's wild they have all these mirrors reflecting the um, um, sunlight onto a central area that will then get really hot right just like I have here it'll get super hot generate um, and they'll, they'll use that heat to generate steam uh, but yeah if you go to Vegas ever you know look out for that um, it's pretty pretty wild now this is that rift I was telling you about earlier you can really from space you can really see this kind of crack um, in the earth's surface and it goes all the way from Africa up through the Middle East um, and basically this is spreading away from each other so and you know I'm not sure what the estimate uh, time is estimated time for this is but um, you know 100 million years 200 million years you're gonna see a big ocean formed in between there but right now you have these huge huge lakes in Africa they're really just amazing um, just in their beauty but also evolution you know speaking about my biology background just the, the amount of time fishes their species have been living in those lakes they just developed a whole lot of really cool colors but this big round one probably the most famous one is called Lake Victoria and then this uh, this one at the very bottom um, might be the biggest one volume wise but uh, Lake Tanganyika the next big one up here um, or actually I think I have mistaken this one down here is Malawi oh you probably think about that hey Vandervoort it's not long Malawi and then this one's Tanganyika and then you got some little bitty ones over here um, Kivu Oops. pointing skills there we go that's Kivu my V's and U's look the same ah oh, I just can't <laughs> and then uh, Edward Lake Edward and Lake Albert I think named after some royal people like this one probably uh, Queen Victoria's brothers or something like that. Uh, but yeah, from space, you can really get a feel for that crack in the earth. And uh, yeah, it was Malawi. This is in French, Plaque Africaine. These are the, the plate, African plate, Indian plate, so Somalian plate. Um, but you can see these... Uh, the arrows showing the spread, the extent of the, uh, oh, there's some lakes up here too that I missed. Is there a lake? Oh yeah, so this one right, looks like there's some right here too. Awesome. Those would be up and lower like Ethiopia, I think. Um, but yeah, those big cracks in the earth um, fill with water over time. And now we have those huge giant African lakes, but like I said, not for long. Well, give or you know, hundred. I'm not sure how many millions of years, but <laughs> here's a great example. Where you can see um, this rifting, this pulling apart, and these gaps that are created. Now this um, is Lake Thing Vol Lake <laughs> Lake. Let me Thing. The G thing vala thing vala batten. This is Iceland. As you can see, this is a huge rift right here. This is rifting. This crust is going this way. This crust is going that way. Man, what a trip! Look at that. You can just see it. Ah, man. I just think that's so cool. These probably like little vacation houses along this lake. Um, but yeah, up in Iceland, again, we see you know, along that mid-ocean ridge, we see tons of volcanic activity. And uh, 
these features that come from it. Uh, this is again, this is the lake thing, thing, vala, thing, vala van. Uh, beautiful lake, for sure. This might be one of those little houses back from here. Can you see the yellow roof? Can't really tell. Anyway, that's the same lake. Um, here's a really nice um, diagram showing the faults. And as you'll see, you know, that faulting often get met, um, volcanic activity, magma popping up from that big rift. And um, in Tanganyika, you do have the tallest mountain in Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, near the equator, yet snowy on top. It's pretty trippy. But remember, the higher you get, the cooler it is. Even though you're near the equator, where there's usually usually hotter, more sunlight. Um, if you go up, I think it's 14,000, 15,000 feet um, tall, you're going to be you're going to be pretty cold. But here we have these blocks kind of sitting there as the plates pulled apart. And then you got these little rift valleys. Okay, you got with all this fracturing, which is really like we see here. See all that kind of fracturing of the rock eventually going to fall in. Um, and then down at the bottom, you can see the lakes on the valley floors. Um, just, yeah, just, yeah, that'd be another place I'd like to visit. Just kind of get a real um, feel for that. Uh, now this is right here is Lake Victoria. Um, also, I believe it is the start of the main tributary of the Nile River, which took a long time to figure out. I think it was mid 1800s. Finally figured out where the Nile came from. And that, that kind of surprised me. I figured I figured that out. Uh, here is Mount Kilimanjaro, um, as you can see. So, uh, I mentioned earlier, um, this is Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. That's an end. I earlier said it was like 14,000 feet. I was wrong. It's 19,000. 310 feet, which is a really big, it's a lot more than the 14,000 feet. <laughs> um, that's that's a huge mountain. Um, that's getting really, really up there. And uh, I just think this is a cool shot showing, you know, the mountain up against, you know, a giraffe on the, on the savannah with these acacia trees. The world is amazing. And this is one of my favorite pictures here too, or, or images, um, showing that Atlantic seafloor, just all these, this rifting zone and all these fractures, you know, just pushing apart these two plates slowly but surely over time. Uh, and then you can really see Iceland just straddling right on top. Of, uh, of that riff zone. All right, so that does it for 4.1 video two.